So another example of a simultaneous move game right here, and we want to solve out the Nash equilibrium. We have two players, Eddard and Cersei, and they have two strategies each. Eddard can expose or silence, while Cersei can go ahead and tell the truth or a lie. And game theory is exactly where a lot of bad examples do come to play. So spoiler alerts if you haven't seen the show at all, but you probably won't want to anyways because they completely destroyed the entire show itself. So as you can see right here, we want to find out our Nash equilibrium and we want to go ahead and do the best response technique. So if you are Eddard, what would be the best thing for you to do? If you knew for sure Cersei was going to tell the truth, would you want to expose her or would you want to stay silent? And once again, we're comparing negative 2 versus 9, and you would want to go ahead and stay silent. So here, remember, negative numbers just tell us that you don't want negative numbers. It's a negative payoff for you, so you always want the highest number for yourself. So positive, negatives, doesn't matter. You just want the highest number. If you knew for sure Cersei was going to lie, so we're comparing exposing, which gives you a payoff of 8, versus staying silent, which gives you a payoff of 12. So once again, you're going to want to stay silent. So here, you always have the strategy of staying silent. Now put yourself in Cersei's shoes. Would you want to go ahead and tell the truth or lie if you know for sure that Eddard was going to expose you? So I'll put this in green. If you knew for sure Eddard was going to expose you, the best thing for you to do is to go ahead and lie because that gives you a payoff of 27 versus a negative 5 for telling the truth. If you knew for sure Eddard is going to stay silent, would you want to tell the truth or lie? And you want to go ahead and lie because that gives you 20 versus 7. And once again, with these game theory games, you are going to come up with a outcome box that is going to give you exactly two underlines or two markings, and that is going to be what our Nash equilibrium is going to be. So here we have an underline for Eddard, we have an underline for Cersei, two underlines and one outcome box. Therefore, that is going to be seen as our Nash equilibrium. Equilibrium. And what is the full Nash equilibrium? What does Eddard do? Eddard is going to go ahead and stay silent, so say silence. What is Cersei going to do? Cersei is going to go ahead and lie. And what are the payoffs attached for this? This is going to be for a payoff, a payoff of 12 slash 20. 12 comma 20. To remember that 12, the first number goes towards player number one, which is Eddard. Second number goes towards player number two, who is Cersei. So as you can see right here, another Another example of using the best response technique in order to solve for the Nash equilibrium and the simultaneous move game. However, there is going to be something that is sort of unusual in this example and also in the previous example that we worked with. So in this example, we noticed that Eddard was always going to stay silent no matter what. So no matter what Cersei played, whether truth or lie, you as Eddard would always stay silent. Silent here, silent here. Cersei also would lie no matter what Eddard would do. So doesn't matter if Eddard would expose her or stay silent. The best thing for Cersei to do is always lie. So no matter what, each of these players would choose the same strategy no matter what the other player was going to do. And this is going to be a special case of something known as a dominant strategy. It occurs when a player chooses the same action no matter what the other players are going to choose. So you go ahead and choose the same strategy no matter what. And the one thing that's beneficial about every single player having a dominant strategy is that a single Nash equilibrium will always result no matter what. If player one and player two both have a dominant strategy, one Nash equilibrium is going to be our result. And we can see this with the previous example right here with player one and player number two. Player one always had the dominant strategy of choosing strategy number two. And player two also had the dominant strategy of playing number two. So no matter what each of these players is going to choose, they always choose strategy two. And that led us to one Nash equilibrium here. And also by extension, the prisoner's dilemma that we built up with the very first game theory uh, sort of the game was with uh, Diego and with uh, Paola. And this is going to be something that we can go ahead and take a closer look at now that we understand exactly how to solve out these game theory games. So put yourself in Diego's shoes. What would be the best thing for you to do if you knew for sure Paola is going to say yes? The best thing for you to do would be go ahead and say yes as well because one is bigger than zero. If you knew for sure she was going to say no, the best thing for you to do is to actually say yes. So once again, you have a dominant strategy. Diego has a dominant strategy of choosing yes. No matter what Paola is going to choose, you always say yes. By the same extension, because this is a symmetric example, Paola is also going to have a dominant strategy of choosing yes. 
If you knew for sure Diego is going to choose yes, the best thing for you to do as player number two is to choose yes because one is bigger than zero if you chose no. And then if you knew for sure he was going to say no, the best thing for you to do is to go ahead and say yes because three is bigger than two. And as we can see right here, this is how we come to our Nash equilibrium. This is a single Nash equilibrium because player one Diego and player two Paola both have a dominant strategy. So no matter what, if both players have a single, if, I, if both of them have a dominant strategy, one single Nash equilibrium is going to emerge. And this is exactly how, why this is the correct solution, the Nash equilibrium and the prisoner's dilemma, as we just suggested a few videos ago, and not this one right here. But it doesn't always have to be the case where every single player has a dominant strategy. So player one might have a dominant strategy, but player two may not, and vice versa. Or both players may not have a dominant strategy. As we continue our discussion, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few more simultaneous move games under game theory.